Hello folks, AZ Flyer here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an auto timer that's tied to your throttle. So the idea here is I want my timer to start running when I give it sufficient throttle activity. If my throttle's already off, the timer won't run. But I want the timer to run when I give it power. So that's the idea of what I mean by an auto timer. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up. First thing you need to do is figure out what switch you want this on as far as resetting or the timer not running at all. I've decided to put it on this switch right here, so I'll show you as part of the setup here. And also, of course, where you want the timer at on your screen and uh, what do you want to run at. I've got this timer set to run for four minutes, and I've put it up here at the very top of the screen. So the first thing we need to think about after that is uh, understanding logic switches. So we're going to set up a logic switch tied to my throttle. So the timer then is gonna reference that logic switch when it goes to run. So I'm gonna to go to my airplane uh, category, scroll over to my logic switches, and you'll see I've got a logic switch that appears auto timer. So you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press plus, and it'll create um, a logic template for you here. I called it auto timer, so let's go ahead and type in, call that auto timer, or whatever you wanna call it. Your function, is going to be A is greater than X, where A is the throttle and X is the point at which the throttle needs to be greater than for the, the, the timer to start running. Now I've set mine for negative 90% and I'm gonna show you why. If I come over here to my mixer and show you where my throttle is, you'll see here my throttle, I've got it negative 100 is off, 100 is positive 100 is on. So I want it to start running when it's greater than 90%. So that means one tick of the throttle was probably negative 90%. So when I go to two ticks, the throttle will begin to run. So I've got, I'm setting my X for negative 90%. That, that means two clicks, two clicks of the throttle and the timer will start running with this logic. So again, you're gonna, you wanna set up for whatever feels good for you. Um, but I like the negative 90 because it, it's two clicks on the throttle, which is just enough. So you're gonna set throttle, you're gonna set source A for throttle, value X, whatever you decide. Again, I'm setting at negative 90%. Acting condition always on. I don't want any delay before starting or stopping, so leave that at zero seconds. And there is your setup for your timer. And you'll notice now, or I'm sorry, for the logic itself. This is the logic that the timer is gonna reference. And you'll notice that when I move the throttle up a couple clicks, my LS1, my logic switch one, turns green. When I come off, it's red. When I come up, it's green. That means it's working. X is A is greater than X. A throttle is greater than 90% and my, and my logic switch is activating. So now I need to tell my timer to look at that logic switch to run. So I'm gonna come back over to the main screen, go to timers, you'll wanna hit plus which will bring up a menu like this. I'm gonna go ahead and I called mine auto timer. That's so I know that's this timer, it's auto timer. I've got it set for down. I want it to count down. My start value is four minutes. That's what my timer is gonna start at when I open it up or when I reset it. I've got it set for speech because that's what I want. I want it to talk to me. I want the countdown, the talking to me to start at three minutes. So I've set three minutes on my countdown. And I want it to count every 30 seconds. I want it to tell me three minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, and so forth. And then my active condition, this is what my, this is the switch. Remember, I used a logic switch. So instead of assigning it to a switch, I'm assigning it to a logic switch. That means I'm gonna tap that. I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna choose my logic switches in my category. And auto timer is the only logic switch I have for this airplane. So auto timer is my, is my member. So logic switches, auto timer, the one I just set up, that's my active condition. Now I've also got a reset. So my reset, again, remember I said I'm going to put on this switch right here. So you'll notice when, when I go to, when I pull this switch all the way to me, that's what I want, that's what I want the reset to be. That means if, I'm, if I've counted down and I want to reset the, reset the timer, pull the switch back and it'll move it back to four minutes. And then that's it, you're all set up. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that if I'm at my reset, if I'm pulled all the way back, my timer's not gonna run because it's the reset switch is on. But as soon as I turn that reset switch off, you'll see the timer start to count down here. See my throttle's up. If I pull my throttle back, the timer stops. 
If I move the, th the throttle back up again, the timer starts counting down. Because I put the timer here to talk to, I want that, the auto timer to be in that screen right there. And then once I click this, it will put this back to reset again. And again, I use a special function to add a sound to that so that I can, when I, when I do that, that means motor active, the timer's active. When I hit the power, I'm good to go. Manual. Pull it back, it won't work because it's set for reset. It's always wanting to reset the, to my base time when this switch is on. So the switch has to be off, has to be off of SD uh, one arrow down for the timer to run. So I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, setting up an auto timer on a logic switch tied to my throttle, I found it to be very, very, very helpful. I hope you find that helpful too. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks and happy flying.